It's a quality. It's a quality. A is A has a yellowness about it, and T has a blueness. Because I didn't choose the colours, it doesn't feel subjective. It's going to help us understand the differences from person to person, brain to brain. The whole experience begins with the moment I close my eyes to go to sleep. Looking at synesthesia as a whole is just too big. There are so many different types. And I think with music, because it has so many varieties within it. It's always in front of my eyes slightly, as like a sort of an Instagram filter, if you will. The glitch in my brain, I experience it as a, as a glitch. It's a quirk. It's like an after party in my brain. I'm Harry Marshall, I'm a documentary filmmaker and I'm going to explore the phenomenon of synesthesia and its role in people's lives. The science behind what triggers it in the modern world and try and illustrate it the best I can for non synesthete eyes. From speaking to other synesthetes, my experiences are different to other people's experiences. I think for a lot of people with graphene colour, they see the letters and the numbers in the colours. I don't. If it's black words on a white page, I see black, black words on a white page, but I know that they have colours. My name is Felicity Ullman, I'm a student mental health nurse, and I have graphene colour synesthesia. It's explained a lot of things I knew already, I've always been good with numbers, I've always done a lot of proofing, proofing essays. Even if I don't know the words, I can tell when something's spelt wrong, because the colour combination will be wrong. It would be an, like an illogical colour combination. I was doing these things anyway, and those were the things I was good at, and now that I realise that other people don't have synesthesia, it explains why I'm so good at those yeah. things. Applying that kind of theory to everything else, is there any writers that you like gravitate towards because of their writing style or because of what words they use? Or do you gravitate towards certain other writing styles because of how, it, how the colours combine? There are certainly writers that I gravitate towards, but here's the thing, grammar, one of my true passions in life, it does interfere with, with my perception of colour. So a lot of punctuation is colourless. So for me, it would just be, it would be like glitching on the TV screen. And so writers like Jane Austen and Virginia Woolf who use a lot of stream of consciousness, um, that, that flows very nicely for me. So I know Virginia Woolf was a fan of the semicolon, but I can almost get over that just because of the fact that the sentence will race and race and race and race. And, and there's just, there's kind of more of a flood of color. It feels, it feels more natural. And I guess that's why she wrote it in the first place, in Stream of Consciousness, because that's how we talk. When I'm sitting and reading an article because I'm bored, and so I just start to pull pull out the colours, like um, like pulling a loose thread on a jumper. I sort, you, know, you can pull them out, and that's when I see the colours. And I guess that's where I start to realise how it is for normal graphene colour synesthetes. So it's, 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 it's another layer to your reading. So you can, obviously, you can concentrate on it and make it more enhanced but then you can also kind of like shoo it away if, you, if need be. Yeah, I've never found my synesthesia to overwhelm me to the point where um, I can't read the words. I guess like when you say a word enough times, it loses all meaning. I can focus on the individual letters and bring out the colours within them, but then the, word themselves, the words themselves lose, lose meaning because then they're just individual letters. The, the blurring and the, the glitchiness of it. That's very much how I experience it. It's, it's, I, and I guess that's informed because I know that there is something in my wiring, in my brain wiring, that's not, not been pruned correctly. It is a glitch. It's a glitch in my brain, 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 brain. Originally, people were sort of looking at the colours and thinking, oh, the existed. But through behavioural tests and things like that, we've been able to establish that it, that it does exist. Because prior to that, it was just self-report. When we're born, with our, our neurons are all developing and sort of connecting and stuff, there is a, a restriction in the pruning. Usually it's pruned out, so these weird connections don't persist. Uh, but they say it's a theory that we all have synesthesia to a degree at birth, and eventually it's all pruned out. But in some instances, this doesn't happen, and we end up with these unusual connections in the brain. That's one theory, and the other theory is um, called the disinhibited feedback theory, which suggests that connections in the brain where usually there's a pathway that goes just one way is actually going both ways, or something a similar thing. Your research, mm -hmm. um, what, what is it and why do you think it's important? I'm looking in particular at music and looking at synesthesia connected with music. 
I'm hoping that the research into synesthesia, into looking at music colour synesthesia, is going to help us understand the differences from person to person, brain to brain, and help us understand general cognition and consciousness in a, in a wider context. Looking at synesthesia as a whole is just too big. There are so many different types of synesthesia. And I think with music, because it um, has so many varieties within it, the classical era was all certain colour or something like that. Sometimes something might have that type of synesthesia that's um, just isolated tones and they hear that and they get, get colours or something like that. Certain types of instrument produce a different colour. There's so many varieties that could be described through or explained by different mechanisms. Yeah, because yeah. we've, we've had it explained as like a glitch mm. kind of experience. Like it's uh, like a, I think this is how she put it, she uh, said that it was like um, something's been printed out, but the colours haven't aligned properly. So it sounds like your um, other participant or, you know, the interviewee might be someone who is a projector. And, the, and the, the difference between that is that you have an external experience of colour. So if you're looking at letters, you still see the black and whatever it's printed in, but right next to it, you know, you might have that experience of, of orange or whatever colour it is associated with it. Associators tend to have the experience in their mind's eye and not necessarily out externally, but internally. So they're sort of different experiences, which may be, again, explained through different mechanisms. I was the odd one out. I think every child or every teenager thinks that they're a bit, you know, weird. But um, it was, I, it put me into so many awkward situations such as I would just say, you know, oh God, this is something like, oh, this is this color. And people would say, of course not. Or, um, uh, yeah, there's some like flickering images on my in front of my eyes right now and you know they wouldn't believe me and it, I was always daydreaming always being inspired extremely by tiny little things around us a piece of soil a piece of plant or a leaf or a tree or anything even a doorknob would would be enough for me to get carried away with the details and the harmony and the colors and the shapes I'm Lale Karayaka I work as an environmental project manager in an international uh, European Union organization. What type of synesthesia do you have? One is called uh, chroma synesthesia. I have also have experiences with taste and smell and sound as well. And I knew that some people would be teachers, some people would be drivers or, you know, firefighters. I would be an artist of some sort, you know. In the, in a day-to-day -day sense, how does it how does it manifest itself? How does it come about? There needs to be some um, high levels of um, sense, sensory triggers, such as um, colorful things or movements. If I move a lot, I also have those episodes. And then, um, if I'm stressed. I don't have them. I inhibit them a lot when I'm stressed and I work in a stressful working environment most of the time. Uh, but I remember that when I was young and when I was a child, uh, those experiences were extremely frequent and it would keep me awake through the night. They were always there. Uh, as I grow up, I found a way to cope with them and I got myself some acrylics and brushes and stuff. And then that night I had my first acrylic painting uh, from, I don't know, 11 to 4 a.m. in the morning and I thought it was half an hour. I think it's quite a positive experience most of the time. So it is triggered by positive things. Looking at concept and the importance of concept and that sort of role in synesthesia and whether or not it's the idea, in fact indeed the idea of synesthesia is what particular research has come out with, of certain things that might bring around um, an experience of colour or shape or something like that, sort of trying to explain abstract or you know sort of difficult things to to, to process in your in your mind. So I'm trying to look at that, and when and that sort of brought you around to the idea of qualia is sort of like and qualia being an experiential quality. What we experience is a representation of outside. But synesthesia challenges this in the fact that, you know, sort of like hearing a chord of G major, for example, and see and feeling that it's green, 
is not a real representation of what's happening because there is no way that a chord of G major can be green. You know, sort of like uh, it's just it's sort of it tries to explain qualia, but it it, it sort of fails and is challenged by by synesthesia in that way. Qualia has also been described as the hard problem of consciousness. Is this thing that we it's an experiential element of human consciousness, I suppose, in the same that, that you know, the difference between a red flower and a yellow flower. Um, and synesthesia has been described as some, by some researchers as an, an extra qualia, an extra element or an extra experience um, on top of a normal experience. It's, a, it's an ongoing, and I certainly don't have the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I found out a lot of theories. But it's interesting when someone who doesn't have synesthesia is telling you what their theory is of your condition. It's just, that's what I'm, how I'm wired. You know, it's, like, it's just still that thing that makes you you and me me. I suppose I do get a little bit defensive. I guess that would be my, my, my word of advice to researchers, is just really be careful and be polite. We have feelings too. We might see the feelings or hear the feelings, but we have them.